during my doctoral training in social work, I, um, I worked in a community-based organization that provided no-cost services to families affected by cancer. One of the girls who stands out for me in that work uh, was a young woman who came to us when she was about 11 and her mother had breast cancer and did a year of treatment and went into remission and we, the family left and then they came back to us when the mother became terminally ill. And we worked with the father who um, uh, was struggling very much and this young woman and her younger brother. And as the mom became sicker, this girl um, took over more and more maternal responsibility in the family. Um, and we worked with them through the death of the mother and the father was very stuck um, in his grief so it took them a long time to start cleaning out the house and to uh, remove all of the cancer paraphernalia from the home. The wig was still on the styrofoam head on the dresser for a year and um, all of the medications. Just, it, was, it was a very rough environment for the kids. And um, this young woman came into group one night and she's with a group of children who are also parentally bereaved so they're all in the same boat together w with trying to figure out how to navigate their lives, their adolescent lives after the death of a parent. And she said, you know, we finally got started. Um, my dad and my brother and I started cleaning out my mom's books. And we thought, that's great. This is a wonderful step forward. Um, but also, the books are an interesting piece because when a young child loses a parent, they lose a connection not only to that parent's love and, and care, but also the parent's life, what their interests were, what their tastes were, what was thought-provoking or inter engaging for them. So we thought that was wonderful. So we said to her, you know, well, did you keep any books? She said, yeah, yeah, no, I definitely kept some books. I said, wonderful, what did you keep? And she said, I kept the breast cancer books because I think I'm going to need them someday. So we've got a 14-year-old girl who's lost her mother, who's taken over a tremendous responsibility for caring for her bereaved and painfully bereaved father and her younger brother. And she's already planning at the age of 14 for a breast cancer diagnosis. So we talked to her and we talked to the group because once she was able to introduce that to the group, we were able to talk about what, um, what having a parent with cancer meant for them medically and genetically. And um, even if there is a genetic foundation that's hereditary in her family cancer, there's an equal likelihood that she won't have it uh, as, as she will. Um, so we did, I, I had the tools to be able to tell her at that time as a social worker, again, not as a physician or a nurse or even a high school science teacher, that this may not actually be your future, um, that there may be a way that your mother's cancer was connected to something in your family. Um, and she can make a decision when she's ready to find out if she has that risk factor in her genetic code. Um, but even if she does, not only does that not mean that she will definitely get cancer, but the decisions that she'll make when she becomes an adult, should she develop cancer, will be so vastly different from the ones her mother made and the choices that her mother or the, the options that her mother had access to, that this set of books that her mother was reading and that may have provided a staple and a, a kind of a, a link to the medical community for her mother will not be the resources that this young woman will need.